Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Fryman, the Chief of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Surgery at St. Joseph Medical Center. Today's medical tutorial is on the Whipple procedure with the adjunct of portal vein, superior mesenteric vein, resection, and reconstruction. As we have shown in previous vid videos, the pancreas is an oblong organ that has a shape similar to this. At the undersurface of the head of the pancreas, the superior mesenteric vein and portal vein confluence is identified. Pancreatic head carcinoma typically is operable when it does not involve the superior mesenteric vein portal vein confluence. However, larger tumors or tumors that are positioned closer to the superior mesenteric vein confluence may involve the lateral wall of the superior mesenteric vein in this fashion or the undersurface or anterior surface of the vein. Today's medical tutorial will describe the adjunct of superior mesenteric vein, portal vein resection, and reconstruction during the Whipple procedure when venous involvement is identified. Let's first review the portal SMV anatomy. The superior mesenteric vein and splenic vein join to form the portal vein. The portal vein, as we know, provides 50% of the oxygenated blood to the liver. This is the splenic vein, and this is the superior mesenteric vein. The inferior mesenteric vein typically drains somewhere from here to here in a similar fashion. Tumors of the, of the head of the pancreas can involve the portal vein, su superior mesenteric vein confluence anywhere from as high as here to as, as low as here. Depending on the location, different ways of resecting and reconstruction of the vein are possible. Um, I'd like to go over some of the different possibilities. If there is involvement of the portal vein at this junction, for example, the splenic vein can be preserved as well as the superior mesenteric vein and resection of the portal vein performed in this fashion. This is a seg segmental resection. If, if this uh, tumor was involving just barely the lateral wall, there are scenarios where a primary or tangential repair can be performed without significant narrowing of the portal vein. In our experience, tangential repairs are the less frequent uh, mode of reconstruction, resection or reconstruction. The majority involve segmental resections. In this situation, if there is enough length, the portal vein can be resutured or reanastomosed to this confluence here, preserving the splenic vein, and this would be performed in an end-to-end -end fashion. If, however, there is not enough length for that to reach, there are two choices for conduits. Um, one is the internal jugular vein or the superficial femoral vein. This, this um, conduit can be easily dissected by prepping the neck with a similar incision that is used by vascular surgeons for carotid and arterectomy along the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The deep superficial femoral vein um, is harvested through a groin incision. Um, I like to identify the deep profunda vein and the deep femoral vein and stay below that in order to provide adequate uh, drainage to the leg. Most patients um, who have the deep profunda vein preserved do not develop um, significant swelling of the lower extremity. The superficial femoral vein is more narrow than the internal jugular vein, 
So based on the patient's anatomy and size of the portal vein and superior mesenteric vein, decisions can be made as to which of these conduits can be used. I tend to favor the superficial femoral vein when possible because the ease of the dissection um, in the groin with, is easier than having to prep the neck um, in, in these type of cases. It's, much fa it's also much uh, faster to harvest. Uh, the next scenario would be a, a tumor that may be involving the uh, superior mesenteric vein, portal vein confluence at the level of the splenic vein. In this situation, the splenic vein can be ligated. Um, in this manner here, the IMV stays in the system and can, prov and can provide venous outflow for the spleen. In these situations, re reconstruction um, with a conduit is, an interposition conduit is usually necessary because the length of segmental resection can be quite long. Once again, the internal jugular vein or superficial femoral vein um, are harvested and used based on the diameter of the superior mesenteric vein and portal vein. When there is a significant uh, mismatch, um, reconstruction in the SMV can be performed using spatulating techniques to have a, a nice wide venous anastomosis. When, we, when performing mes superior mesenteric vein, portal vein resection and reconstruction, uh, our approach has been this is the superior mesenteric artery and the venous system is up here. This is the portal vein SMV junction. Our approach has been to dissect the superior mesenteric artery at the root of the aorta as it leaves, identify the branches, especially what, what are the pancreatic or duodenal branches, to devascularize the uncinate process. The SMA is skeletonized and the retroperitoneal dissection performed, the uncinate process being removed in its entirety from the artery and the retroperitoneum. This allows for less blood loss and allows for the pancreas to, divided, to, to be divided to the left of the patient's superior mesenteric vein, portal vein confluence in this manner right, right here. A small amount of heparin, heparinization is then usually performed before clamping of the vessels. We have found the artery first approach um, to allow for less blood loss and shorter clamping times. If the reconstruction is straightforward, superior mesenteric artery occlusion is not routinely performed. Uh, if, the if the resection and reconstruction is more complex, um, temporary inflow superior mesenteric artery occlusion during heparinization uh, allows for less venous congestion during the um, clamping time. I thank you for listening to my uh, video. For more information regarding venous resection during the Whipple procedure, please visit my website at www.liverandpancreascancer.com.